In this video, we are going to take a look at another microcontroller. It's not the Arduino Nano, it's the Raspberry Pi Peco. I'm going to show you how to hook it up to the computer and create some cool projects using MicroPython, which is a great programming language and it's really easy to use. It's not like the C++ or the C language, which we use to program the Arduino boards. Today we take a look at this microcontroller, which has so many pins that we can use to uh, create some circuits or control some devices. Also, we can read the sensor readings, including the DHT sensor. But first of all, let's create our first blink sketch. This microcontroller comes with a built-in LED, which is connected to the GPIO pin number 25. We're going to turn it on and off. But first of all, we have to hook it up to the uh, computer using the micro USB cable. But you have to hold down the boot key. It is called the boot selected key. And then we can hook it up like this. If you do that, you will see these files. So this is a little storage of the Raspberry Pi Pico. Basically, we are going to put our code in here, which will be executed in the Raspberry Pi Pico. But first of all, let's open up this HTML file, and I'm going to open it up in Google Chrome. They have included this link so that you can learn how to use the microcontroller. We're going to select the Pico series, which includes different kind of microcontrollers, including the Pi Pico or the Pi Pico W, which is this microcontroller that comes with the Wi-Fi capability. We are going to talk about it as well. Here we have all of the features, like the processor. It is a dual Cortex processor, which means it is a little bit faster than the Arduino. I highly recommend you to read about it. Under here we see that it comes with a temperature sensor, which is really great. One of the first things that you need to know about the microcontroller that you use is the pinout diagram, so that we can know how to program these. For example, the built-in LED is connected to the GPIO pin number 25, we are going to turn it on and off in this tutorial. And to do that, we need to move on to the MicroPython programming language. And if you don't know what is MicroPython, it is a version of Python that is optimized for microcontrollers to write the code and create your projects. To be able to use it, we have to download this file. If you are using the PyPeco or the PyPeco W, let's go ahead and click on it. And I'm going to put it on my desktop. Then we could simply drag and drop the file to this storage. Our next step is to install an IDE or Integrated Development Environment. For the Arduino boards, we use the Arduino IDE. But for the PyPeco, we are using MicroPython. And the IDE that we use for that is Tony. Just go to this link, tony.org, and select the operating system that you have. For me, I have a Windows machine. And I'm going to install the latest version. The same thing, I'm going to put it on my desktop. So it's going to install Python as well as the MicroPython version. Let's go ahead and uh, execute it. Just double click on it. The steps are really easy. Hit next and install. Accept. I'm going to leave everything as default. We can create the desktop icon. And finally, we can hit install. A few moments later. 2000 years later. And there you go. We've successfully installed the Tony IDE. Let's hit finish. We have the desktop icon. We can open it up and let's go. Now, the first thing that we need to do is to tell Tony that we are going to use MicroPython to program this board that is connected to the computer by going to run and configure interpreter. By default, it is set to local Python, but I'm going to use MicroPython for the Raspberry Pi Peco. For the port, it's going to try to detect it automatically or we can select it. Let's hit OK. Here we have the MicroPython version. It's 1.23. And we can write a Python code, which is going to be executed by the Raspberry Pi Peco. For example, if we write print, to print something, like hello world, and hit enter, the Raspberry Pi Peco will execute it, and we have the message hello world. But we are going to write a main sketch. For example, let's try to turn on this LED, which is connected to the GPIO pin number 25. To do that, we have to import a package, which is like a library. To import a library, we use include, sorry, it's not include. We use import for Python, and the name of the library, like machine, which allows us to create our pen, or declare it inside our code. We can give it a name, like LED equals, and we use machine dot. Then we have the pen class. We use this to create a pen object that takes in two parameters. The first one is the pen number, which is 25, and the second parameter is like the pin mode to tell Tony that we are going to use this pin as output to turn it on and off, or to read from it, like the sensor. 
in our case we are going to use machine dot bin then dot out which means output next we can turn it on using led dot and we have this uh, method or function which is called value that takes in zero to turn the led off or one to turn it on there is also another command like on which can do the same thing so another advantage of python that it's really easy to write let's check if it's working by going to run and run current script and there you go the led turns on and it's green led before i finish this video let's create something more interesting like the blinking led sketch we'll be able to turn on and off this led we have to call some kind of a loop that is called over and over again in MicroPython, or Python in general, we use the while loop, just write while, while it's true, then colon, and hit enter. So everything that we put right here is going to be called over and over again, because this condition is always true. Each time, we are going to turn the LED on using LED.on, then we have to turn it off over and over again using LED.off. If we give the sketch a try using run and run current script, so here true is not recognized. I think it starts with an uppercase T. And let's hit run again. You notice nothing is happening because the LED is turning on and off so fast and we can't see it using our eyes. To prevent that, we need to add some kind of a delay. For example, we need to tell the program to wait for one second each time. If you have followed my videos about using the Arduino, we use the delay command. But in MicroPython, we have to import another package or library using import, and it is called time. Under this library, we have another function or method by typing time.sleep, and this takes in the number of seconds that we need to wait, like uh, 0 0.5 sec. Then we turn it off and wait for half a second again. I'm gonna copy it and paste it. Now let's hit run. And there you go, we have created our blinking LED sketch. The LED is turning on and off. So I think that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I hope you like it. If you have any question or comment, make sure to write it under the comment section down below. Also make sure to subscribe to my channel so that you get notified with my next videos. We're going to use this microcontroller a lot and I will see you in the next one.